Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts. I'm here today to do a tier list ranking of all the songs from Metallica's 72 Seasons album, the 11th studio album from the band. And we're going in order of the track list. So we're going to start with 72 Seasons, the opening of the album, to the very end, Inamoratus. We're going to go in that order, and we'll be ranking them on my personal preference. Remember that, my personal preference, not all of you guys, in terms of how I feel about each song and I'm going to put in tier list. S being, of course, the best, top tier, the best of the best, and D, of course, being the lowest. I can tell you right now, there's not going to be any songs from this album that are going to be in C or D, in my personal opinion. If a song is in B, it doesn't mean it's a bad song. It just means I don't personally love it like you guys do. And that's the thing. Remember, we all have different opinions. Music hits us differently. For a perfect example, my reaction for the first time hearing Room of Mirrors, you guys were like, some of you guys were like freaking out going, I can't believe you don't love this the first time. Like, that's not how this works. It's not guaranteed I'm going to love something immediately the first listen through. A lot of the songs I really enjoyed and love, and I now love even more after that first reaction, my first listen for the videos. But that's just how music is. Music hits us all differently. It is what it is. So let's dive in and let's rank these songs. Remember, this is my opinion. Let me know in the comments below how you would rank the songs in a tier list format like this. Okay, let's dive in. So right away, with the single songs, they've been out for uh, longer than the rest of the album. 72 Seasons, of course, been out a little bit longer than the rest of the album, but not by much. But I'm going to give the song personally an A. I think it's a great opener. That opening, like, first minute or so, which is clearly going to be the... the, the, the Thing they're going to play in the monitors when they're opening up uh, a show they're definitely going to open up 72 seasons as an opening uh for a live show and you can definitely tell that just the way the bass and the riffs dun 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 that's gonna get the crowd really excited when they're starting up because i'm they're gonna open some of their shows with 72 seasons especially with the two night thing they're doing but it's a great opening song got some fast paced stuff there got some heaviness in it uh, but it's more of a faster track. It's, it's like the fast track of the album. Uh, but it's a great opener, a great guitar solo from Kirk, and overall just great overall performance from all of them. And it's a great opener for this album. Shadows Fall. Now, when I first heard the song for my reaction, I would have given a B. But over time, the song has grown on me, and that freaking riff that comes in in the middle section, and they play it towards the end. Dun, 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 Like, it's simple when I looked at the tabs, but... It kicks ass. Shadows Follow is now an A for me. I would have given a B if I, if, if I was doing this tier list after hearing the song for once, but I wanted to give myself a couple of listens for my review that I also put up as well before this video. But I also just in general just wanted to give more time for these songs to do this video as well. But Shadows Follow is a great follow-up. I think that they're going to definitely going to perform that song after 72 Seasons as a great follow-up, as they've done with like other uh, concerts where they've been pro promoting new albums. They do like Hardwired into Atlas Rise, and then for Death Manatic, they had uh, That Was Just Your Life that goes into the end of the line. Of course, track one and two from the album. So they're definitely going to follow that pattern, I think, again with this. But Shadows Follow is a great uh, second song to continue with the flow of the album and uh, got some kick ass stuff in it. Screaming Suicide is a song that's been out for quite a while. And I think it's a great, it was a great single, and I still think it's a great uh, song as well. I'm going to go with A as well on this one. I feel like it still holds up, even though it's been out for quite a while, and it holds up comparing to the rest of the album. Um, if Darkness Had a Sun, just a little heads up, it doesn't really hold up as well. I think it's maybe the weakest song on the album, in my personal opinion. Still fun to listen to. But Screaming Suicide, I think, definitely was a better, like, a better way to kind of see okay this is kind of what the album is going to kind of end up being a little bit in terms of we got some middle pace stuff and some great catchy like choruses which is catchy chorus and screaming suicide and uh, it definitely is a song that i'm glad that they put out as a single because i definitely think it was worth putting out as a single in my opinion sleepwalk my life away this is a song that people really gravitated towards it's one of those songs people really love for me i don't love it as much as other people at least right now okay i'm doing this tier list a couple days into the full album release I'm giving it a B. It's it is catchy, it is cool to listen to, and it has some great moments, but it it hasn't really captured me exactly yet. Now, if I do this tier list, say maybe a month later down the road again, which I probably won't do that, but if I was to do that, maybe my mind would change on this because sometimes there are certain Metallica songs that you I listen to a couple times. Okay, I'm enjoying it. It, it fits on the album where it's at or whatever, but it doesn't really click, and then eventually, if sometime, sometime down the road, it will. That's what kind of happened with Load and Reload. For a long time, when I first got into Metallica, I was only listening to their first four or five albums, including the Black Album a little bit, but then Death Magnetic, and then eventually I got to Load and Reload and really started to listen to those songs more, really like paying attention, and then it clicked. Those albums hit. Certain songs in there, not the best, but in terms of the Load and Reload era, it took a bit, but then it clicked, and oh my god, did it click. Fucking Fixer, 
The Outlaw Torn, Believing Me, Hero of the Day. God damn, those songs. So, Sleep Walk My Life Away for right now. It's at a B. It's not a terrible song. Like I said, it's not terrible. You Must Burn. Now, I'm just being honest here. I think this is an S-tier song. Now, the reason why I'm putting it there, it, you, some people say, well, that's too high. For me, it is a song I heard the first time from my reaction, and every time I've heard it since then, it has grown on me more and more. This is a song I wish they would have put out as a single, in my personal opinion. I think it would have really helped sell the album, because there have been people that have been shitting on the singles leading up. Now, 72 Seasons, the song itself, when it came out as its fourth single, I'm surprised they put out four singles, but that fourth single, 72 Seasons, kind of turned things around. I think You Must Burn could have helped because if Darkness Had a Sun wasn't released as a single and they put out, say, You Must Burn instead of A Darkness Had a Sun as the third single, I think it would have performed better. You Must Burn is heavy as hell. It's catchy. That middle riff, that Sabbath feeling riff is so freaking cool. And I think it's a song that it just, it, it deserves more recognition because there's people that have been talking about songs they left from the album and You Must Burn is not talked about enough in my opinion. And that's the difference of music because a lot of you guys think, this song, this song, like, yeah, but, but You Must Burn, like, you know, I just kind of wish people really appreciate You Must Burn a little bit more, but I'm giving an S tier. I fucking love this song to death. Lux Eterna. It's been out for quite a while. It is the, literally the opening, uh, the first song we've ever heard from the record. I'm giving it an A tier. It's classic. It's classic thrash. It takes you back to Hit the Lights, which I think that was the plan. That was the idea behind the riff, is that we're going to play it up like it's hit the lights we're going to literally play it up like the origin which that's why there are a lot of people speculating that this could be their final album because there's a lot of throwbacks to all of their material throughout all of these years of performing as a band and Lux Eterna is definitely an homage to hit the lights which was literally the first song you ever hear from metallica if you go from their discography order hit the lights is the first official song you hear from metallica so i think that was the plan but it's catchy it's short i wish there was a little bit more going on with it but at the same time it is perfect the way it needs to be because it's a song that doesn't require to be a bunch of craziness crown of barbed wire again it's another song that i think deserves an s tier some may say meh maybe a tier but for me as my personal preference this song is fucking killer and i finally found the video this morning as i'm recording this video i found the video where kirk was playing the riff during a 2017 because it was back around 2017 they were having these um they were actually showcasing light like live streaming their tuning room like i don't think all of it but at least a good portion of it maybe it was the whole tuning room session but they would live stream it and people were uh, uploading it to youtube and posting it in places so you can actually see them in the tuning room before they go out now they do release some videos over the years in terms of him in the tuning room but it's not the whole thing but in the tuning room they kirk was playing crown of barbed wire and now we now we have the song it's fucking catchy that that ending riff, I really wish that ending riff would have been on the rest of the song as well. It is a great song. Even though that James says crown of barbed wire, it's fine. I love the song to death. It is fucking a great song. So crown of barbed wire, in my opinion, has to go up at the top tier. This may change. You know, this list may change over time, like I've been saying, but uh, I'm sticking with S tier. Fucking fantastic. Chasing light. It's catchy. It's groovy. I like the opening of it, and I think it's got some great uh, great sections in there, especially the chorus. But uh, I got to give Chasing uh, Light a B as well. It hasn't clicked exactly like I want it to, and it's not saying that it's a bad song. I'm not saying that, oh, it, it won't really catch on and make me go, oh, my God, now I love it. Like, it's a great song. I have a good time listening to it as I go through the whole entire album from start to finish. But it's not a song that hasn't gravitated towards me yet. Um, so If Darkness Had a Son... Um, I really don't know what else to say. I mean, look, I could give this a C tier because it is it is catchy to listen to. If darkness had a sun, here I am. And then, of course, that riff that closed out the album, dun, 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 like that pattern or whatever. It's a, it's a kind of a simple pattern, but it's really groovy and catchy. But I wish it had more going on with it. And I think I would literally put it down at the bottom of B. Not a C, but bottom of B. I know people, some people have like where they have a tier list where they put like they have it in order of, you know, top to bottom and S, A and B and all that stuff for different things. They do tier list. But for me, it's just like I just put it up there. I don't have an actual order per se. Um, so, yeah, Too Far Gone. This is another S tier song, in my personal opinion. This song I wish was longer, but maybe it would actually ruin the magic of it. It's so fucking good. 
and the, the chorus is like one of the best that's something i've really noticed the choruses in this album for the songs have pretty much all been fantastic and they've been so damn catchy i think that's what really helps these songs overall because the verses are one thing some of the verses are really damn good but too far gone is great okay it, it's a, it's a fantastic song i can't get enough of those three songs and of course i think you know where anna marana may i'm going but yeah so room of mirrors the song has grown on me i'm giving it an eight here now it has grown on me my my first reaction to it um was not mixed but i would say more so positive was some yeah it have to grow on me and it has grown on me some it hasn't fully grown on me like because you some guys saying this is like the best song on the album in my opinion i don't agree with that but Rumor Mirrors have definitely improved in terms of the uh, the melody, that the, that lead section that is really damn good, um, and some great sections as well in terms of the chorus and all that. And I saw the actual music video they put out later because I, I did all the reactions. It was pretty much all of the uh, uh, lyric videos. But Rumor Mirrors, like that music video they put out after the fact in terms of like a visual, like a drawn thing, that was kind of cool to watch. Uh, but Room of Mirrors has grown on me, but it's not a song that hasn't fully developed and go, holy shit, I fucking love this. But it definitely is catchy as hell. And, and, and like that lead section, uh, that, that uh, melody section is great. And Murata, clearly, it's got to go S tier. Some people are thinking this is the final song from Metallica. Like they're not going to put out any more new music. That This is literally a homage to all of their discography for the most part. And... I can see that point. I really hope it's not, but Inamorata is the way to end the album. And I'm so happy with the 11 minute runtime that I was right in terms of it's going to be like a version of Fixer, a version of The Outlaw Torn, which is more Fixer than Outlaw Torn, but also My Friend of Misery. Some Orion in the mix in terms of that middle, like lead section that really reminds me of the middle section of Orion. The song is so good. People are even saying, I wish it was even longer than it already is at 11 minutes. But I really loved how they put it all together and i'm and i really hope with this album that we get the behind the scenes the making of videos because i really want to see how they came up with inamorata i would love to see how they formatted and put that together because essentially they haven't done something like, like inamorata in a long time in terms of a song like that which the last time they did it really was fixer in terms of a song that's a closer that isn't crazy or trying to go too fast it's just a groove feeling type song and james really lets out his emotion in emirata like he literally let i think it's his best vocal performance on the album some of the best lyrics on the album as well james really shines here and everybody shines on the fucking song it is so good and it's deep it's a monster of a song it's what it is so i would love to see their thought process behind this because they could have easily done okay let's try to do another spit out the bone type ending because that's what they did for hardwired to self-destruct they're like no Let's actually do, maybe that was a discussion. Maybe let's try to go the route of a outlaw torn fixer type situation, a slower paced, long song to close out the album. Maybe that was the thinking. But this is my list. You Must Burn, Crown of Barbed Wire, Too Far Gone, and Murata in the S tier. Fantastic songs, the best songs on the album. I think the best song on the album, I think, is Anna Murata. But, I mean, these other fucking three songs in the S tier are amazing. 72 Seasons, Shadows Follow, Screaming Suicide, Lux Eterna, Room of Mirrors are in the A tier. Great songs uh, throughout the album as well, and I think they're going to grow on over uh, grow over time as we as I listen to the entire album. And then of course, sleepwalk my my see I said wife again. Sleepwalk my life away. I can't even talk today. Chasing light. If darkness had a sun in the B tier, they're not terrible. They're not god awful. They are good songs. They just haven't really captured for me personally, and haven't really uh, got my full attention to where I'm like this is. I love this song. They're great. They're great in their own right, but they're not up here with these other ones, in my opinion. So what do you guys think of my list? I'm curious to know how you guys would rank and tier list the songs uh, from the album. Let me know in the comments below, guys, or share, because I think you can also share on Tier Maker the uh, thing. So maybe I'll share the actual um, thing so you guys can actually do it yourself as well so I can see the results from you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys soon. Peace out.